Welcome to the 8th Annual Black Sustainability Summit. We give thanks to all who have made this event possible, those named and unnamed, to each one of our sponsors, from Gangsters to Growers, to Southern Sayre, all the way to those who have come through to give us support, Aya Paper Company with their donations, Seed to Shirt by sponsoring our t-shirts this year, National Black Food and Justice Alliance for their commitment to coalition work, and Adiki, Aya International Development, along with Awali Veganic Homestead. As you tune into presentations, kindly trust and verify what's being shared. Hi, good afternoon. My name is Robert Cabrera. And I appreciate your patience being here for three days. This is the last day of the three days. So I'm going to open with some insane storytelling as a gratitude for your patience. Uh, my presentation today is about grant matchmaking using, using AI for community-based organizations. And I'm going to show you how earlier Lexi talked about all the different resources you can go to look for tax incentives to look for grant matchmaking. And what I'll talk about is how by creating a profile that's going to take you two to three minutes, this AI can surf the web and find the perfect matching opportunities for you. And not only that, we give you a chance of success. So we tell you you have an 80, 90% chance of this opportunity. And so for your patience of being here, my gift to you is if you go to nakodo.ai, you sign up, it's free, and I'll set up a profile for you. And what I'll do is go in the background and look for money for whatever it is you want to do. N-A-K-O-D-O, nakodo.ai. There is a button that says join. Have you seen it? It says join the wait list. N A K O D O D O dot A I. Are you all on the Wi Fi? You may have trouble if you just N A K O D O dot A I. Yeah. You, I, I just saw it on your screen. So now, uh, join early by top right. It says join. Early bird access. Yes. So if you do that, we'll set you up with a profile and then start looking money for you while you sleep at night. So that is that is the end of this conversation. But let's go back to the I started with the end in mind. Let's go back to the beginning. So a bit about me. Um, I, I, uh, I am a refugee. I am an engineer. I'm a humanitarian. Uh, my story started in East Africa. I was born in Rwanda. If you all have seen Hotel Rwanda, I survived the genocide by hiding in, the, in a tunnel for uh, 22 days. And uh, it was six of us in my family, and we had neighbors that were being killed with machetes. And so my dad decided to invite um, 11 other people. So it was 22 people hiding in the tunnel, we left very little food, no running water, no electricity. And um, I always, I'm starting with that story because it reminds me of where we are today. We survived that particular ordeal because we set our differences aside and came together. Right. A lot of the people that did not survive the genocide said, hey, I'm gonna do my own thing, right? And so today, like in 1994, the only way we can deal with the crisis we're dealing with, the, the, the climate crisis, the energy crisis, the need to uh, do an energy transition, is by setting our differences and coming together, right? And part of that is by sharing resources like Angela just shared. Um, but we have to be wise and cautious about it. we share those resources. I was just discussing with Dr. E, OpenAI's first investor was Elon Musk. Right? So, part of what we do here on the platform, different from a general AI, is whatever ideas you give us, we do our best as step zero to either allow you to IP 
or copyright your ideas. So we want to make sure you own them. All right? Um, but how did I get into technology? Essentially, after surviving the genocide, I spent six years in refugee camps in Africa, in the Congo, in Uganda, and finally in Botswana, and then moved uh, to the U.S. in 2000. And um, when, you grow, when you're born in a genocide and you grow up in refugee camps, you become insanely resilient. Yes. And so I discovered resilience was my gift in life. And my, my, my whole life has been, how can I get that gift and share it with society? And the path to do that was to create very highly accurate predictive models that help society to predict risks. And if you can predict the risk, you can hopefully have enough time to prepare and mitigate that risk. And so my chosen profession in predicting risk, it's been several of them, but mostly it's around the energy grid. And so um, Gary talked about hurricanes and tornadoes. So my day job, what I'm known for, what I won the 2022 alumni of the year for Stanford, is using satellite imagery to predict impact of extreme weather on power lines. So when a hurricane is coming, uh, what Georgia Power does is they wait for the hurricane to happen, and then the same crews, and it may take three days, it may take two weeks, it may take three months. With my technology, we get the environment, we get the grid, we create a weather tunnel, a weather simulator like a video game, and we shake every tree a thousand times, and we can tell the power company two weeks beforehand what part of the grid is going to be affected, how many people are going to lose power, where the power is going to, is going to happen, and our accuracy is 97%. So this, this uh, I think it was two weeks ago, we were featured in Newsweek magazine. Uh, that's all I'll say about my day job. That's my, um, my, my um, professional roots of AI. But most of this be does not benefit yes. us. And if you think it doesn't benefit you, it certainly does not benefit Africa. So I said, hey, can I, how can I get this knowledge and eh, try and put it back home? And the one thing I decided to go after, which was the frustration of mine as an entrepreneur, was money. We need resources. And so um, that's what Nakodo is. It's a machine whose whole job is to match you perfectly with money out there. And before we bring you that opportunity, we check with the funder to make sure that they want to talk to you. So most grants are cold calling, right? You're knocking on a stranger's door begging for money. We are reversing that. We want to make all our introductions warm leads. And we have a system to do that. Uh, but before that, we are on a farm. And so when my brother talked about farming, I said, hey, I have to talk about my farming adventures. <laughs> so in 2016 to 2020, I was in Ghana, West Africa. Ghana produces 20% of the world's cacao. Uh, it's a $150 billion industry grown mostly by smallholder farmers that are insanely poor, right? And so when I moved there, I was there uh, to do microgrid solar, and I realized they have a money problem. They can't access money because 90% of them don't use banks. So I spent two years building a credit scoring system, right? I found out that when you lend to an average person with a formal bank, they have a high default rate, 25%. But the farmer, as long as you allow them to harvest, their repayment rate is 99. They're perfect. So I built a credit system with the idea of saying, if I can show the farmer to be credit worthy, maybe someone is going to lend them money. Because they have a perfect uh, industry, cacao. Apple is the highest pre-sold product in technology. 70% of it is pre-sold. Cacao beans from Ghana, 85% of them are bought before they even harvested, right? But I ran into reality on the ground, which is that Ghana gets $2 billion every year of money for their cacao sector. All that goes 
in about five people's pockets, right? And so clearly they did not want the money going to the farmers. I said, okay, if you won't give the money to the farmers, I'm gonna try to build a farmer bank. And I quickly became public enemy number one, oh. right? And so this is my experience. I literally lived among the cacao farmers, had to fetch water from a borehole. Most of the time the farmers were busy, so I had to babysit in order to get their attention. And um, I had just roamed all over, right? So when I saw this, what you're doing here, I said, our people back home are powering $200 billion industries living off the land, right? And so um, I love what you're doing here. And this is, this is a second application of AI, which was creating a credit score system. So there was this assumption that because these people are in the informal sector, they are not credit worthy. They didn't go to school, they don't have jobs, if I give them money, it's gonna disappear. It turns out the FICO score, the FICO score we all use here, uses 200 data points per score. Who knows how accurate a FICO score is? Somebody, uh, Gary, tell me, how accurate is the FICO score out of 100? 30, you know, not, not very accurate for me. Okay, I had, I had 30%, 30%, uh, 25. 25, 25. Marquise. But he got the weight of 100. Uh, I, I don't know, I'm about to defer to Dr. Dr. 30, okay, so the FICO score, at its very best, is 40% accurate. Oh, wow. So the average is 40 to 60, right? And they're using 200 data points. With the cacao farmers, we got it down to seven factors, and our accuracy was 85%. Okay. Right? That's when I got really excited about these things. I said, wow. And so um, the same technology is actually being used in South Africa and Soweto to help people living in shanty towns be able to get mortgages, yeah. right? People have been paying rent for 40 years. Nice. No one is giving them a loan. We go in, we show them to be credit worthy and they get a loan, right? So this was sort of my, my second interest in, um, in AI. Um, but most recently, as, uh, as I, I entered this space of, of sustainability is what I call it, I, it, it dawned on me as a personal entrepreneur that no matter how smart, how hard working, how well intentioned you mean, if you don't have money in the bank, you can't get far. And part of this project, Nakodo, came out of my personal frustration as an entrepreneur, um, applying to several grants, uh, most of them not getting them. I remember the first National Science Foundation grant I applied for, it took two years to research. Um, I hired a consulting firm, paid them something like $15,000. It took three months for them to put together that application. Nine months later, I got it, right? So I was happy. I tried it again, failed the second time. I tried to go for phase two, right? You have a phase one and phase two. I paid them $50,000. It took six months, nine months later, I got denied. So I said, ah, what if I could get the no at the beginning and not at the end? <laughs> right? I said, okay, I know one thing. If there is large amounts of data, I know how to mine it and I can predict things using data. And so that is where Nakodo was born, right? Its project objectives are for grant seekers and grant funders, and we do things, right? For a given grant, we, we've mined um, basically 30 years worth of government grants across all 28 agencies, 200,000 government grants. And we said, what has made them successful and what has made them non-successful? And that's the information we use. So when you create a profile on our page, it's to say, what's gonna get you that 850 FICO score from the get-go? Now, those same 200,000 grants, less than 6% of them were received by. So that's also something to account for, right? As good as general AI is, you have to account for the biases up front. And its bias is not in our favor. And that's something that is engineered in our solution. We say, hey, 
when we onboard people, let's make sure at least 70% are so that we can reverse that bias, right? Um, and so that's what we do, right? Once we get uh, those, those, those factors, we search the web for you. That's what's number one, we vet. But everyone does that, right? Uh, uh, there's a whole bunch of solutions that give you uh, opportunities in your inbox. That's not enough. What we do and what makes us unique is the second step, the verify. When Black Sustainability applies for a grant to the Gates Foundation, before we even tell them about it, we go to the Gates program office and say, hey, here's the profile of Blacks and Sustainability. With all the check marks you're looking for, do you want to talk to them? And only after they say yes do we say, hey, talk to them. And we think that increases your chances of success, right? So that's part of what we do in the sense that everyone else just vets, we vet, and we verify. And so the recommendation engine, as I mentioned, is the fact that we've studied historical data points. We create your profile based on key data points, and we also do the grant matchmaking. Um, Angela did the phenomenal job of generating a letter of interest in the very beginning. We do that for you. So again, so that by the time I send an opportunity to you, thumbs up, all you do is sort of put together the application, right? Uh, to set you up for success, because from my experience, I don't want any one of you or anyone else to spend stupid amounts of money, wait for months only to be rejected. If you're gonna get that, no, let it be from the beginning and not at the end. And so what does this mean in practice? So here's a typical journey of what it might look like. Let's say back in September, you identify that you need a grant opportunity, right? And so you spend 15 hours researching, going through all those announcements, right? And then you identify three opportunities that work for you. You spend three hours preparing that letter. You submit the three letters to apply for them, right? Uh, and then uh, you get invited back to, to apply to one full, for the full application. You spend 30 hours across three months to prepare one full application, which you submit in July. July is when they generally do. You have to wait six months in December to get your results. You get rejected. What is the difference that an AI engine can make? That very same journey, if you sign up for Nakodo, right, which costs you nothing, we're gonna go through at least 1,500 announcements, scale, probably closer to 15,000. We're always surfing the internet, the web, foundations, corporations, grants. We'll submit at least 15 letters of intent with zero cost and time for you, right? Of the 15, assuming you get the same odds a third, you get invited to apply to five full applications, right? Uh, of those five, let's say you now have time enough to apply for three, because instead of just three months, you have a full almost nine months to submit. You submit the three full applications, and in December, maybe you get rejected to two, but you get uh, the one. So what I'm saying is AI saves you not only time and money, but increases your odds. Life in general is a game of odds, right? So the benefits we think we can provide for organizations is we save you time in the researching part, putting together the letter. We expand your, your search space. We increase your, your, your chances of, of, of succeeding by submitting more letters of intent. Um, you have better odds, five versus one. You have an increased amount of time to apply because now the AI did the preparation for you. And then simply by doing that, you just increase your odds by three times. And so that's sort of the use case. My mission here in this community is to get you money for whatever your cause is. Um, and this is how we plan to do that. And so in, in summary, what makes us different? As I mentioned, a lot of the other solutions just vet. They look at what matches for you, they give it to you. We vet and we verify. Furthermore, we're actually building a feature called cultivation, where if we identify what you are doing and organizations that may be interested in your work, we network you with them beforehand, long before you need money from them, so they know who you are through webinars. So for example, I was telling Dr. E, two weeks ago I went to New York Climate Week. 
the hottest sustainability event in the world. And I happened to stumble upon someone who's a community program officer for the Community New York Trust, one of the big ones. It, and I told him about what I'm doing. The guy caught a Holy Ghost. He went crazy. He said, Robert, I am a part of 50 foundations that are looking for environmental justice organizations to invest in. You understand? There are people out there looking for you. You just have to present yourself in a format that they used to. Increasing your odds, right? So that's the vetting and verifying. When I recommend someone to one of the 50 foundations, I'll be sure that they know who you are and they want to talk to you before you waste your time and energy putting in that application, right? Um, we are made for CBOs. My entire development team are people of color. Half of us are immigrants. So this is very personal for us, right? It's not like... We need to read the research paper on race and relations to understand what's going on. We live it every day, right? Number two is, is access, right? A lot of such tools are behind paywalls, uh, a whole, just complications. I, I did a, a, a survey and I tried to sign up for some of my competitors. I mean, you gotta wait two weeks, go through introductions and webinars and seminars and verify. No one has time for that. Um, the third thing, as I mentioned, whatever we bring you, whatever we recommend is both vetted and verified. So my favor today is uh, tell your friends, tell your colleagues to sign up. I'd love to start producing results for you uh, sooner than later. And uh, that is me. That is my project. I welcome questions.